Okay, so I'm starting fresh here, and I want to start talking about working with audio clips uh, more specifically. So I have an audio track here, and I have a MIDI track here. I don't need this MIDI track right now, so I'm going to select this MIDI track and delete it, just like that. Uh, I don't really need to see my inputs and outputs, so I'm going to go ahead and hide those. And I don't really need the sends and returns right now either, so I'm going to hide that as well. So let's talk more about importing audio clips and some creative ways to kind of play around with combining these clips. As we know, each audio track can only play one clip at a time. Any track can only play one clip at a time. So if I want to play multiple clips together, I'm going to need more than one audio track. So I'm going to go ahead and create a few audio tracks right now. Now before I created an audio track by simply grabbing a piece of audio and dragging it into this area that says drop files and devices here. We can also go to the create menu and we have the option to insert an audio track or insert a MIDI track. And shortcuts are always helpful because it speeds up your workflow. So Command T is the shortcut to create an audio track. I will create four audio tracks. Well, I'll have a total of four, so I'll create three more. One, two, three. There we go. And just a quick reminder, I'm gonna import some shorter loops. If I go into my preferences under the Record Warp Launch tab, if you guys remember, any short loops, uh, any short clips that I import are going to be automatically warped and looped. So this will make it a lot easier for me to start playing around with stuff the minute it's dragged in. All right, with that established, I'm gonna go into my places down here and I have a folder with a bunch of loops and oftentimes if you get, uh, if you have a sample library, if you're buying uh, royalty free samples from different content providers, generally they'll give you a good amount of information about the clip itself. So looking at these, I can see the tempo of all these different loops inside of this particular folder. It's 132 BPM, and it's a bass sound that's in the key of G. Now the reason this information is really helpful is that let's say maybe you're not ready to start creating your own original content from scratch, but you wanna experiment and mix and match different content uh, from different sample libraries. Well, you wanna make sure that things are gonna match in terms of the key that they're in. We know that we can transpose audio clips. Uh, so if you have one clip that's in the key of G and another one that's in the key of F, you're probably gonna to wanna to transpose one of those so that they're both playing in tune with each other. We'll start to explore uh, more of that as we run into it. But for right now, I wanna start off with a drum loop of some sort. And ideally I want something that's not too busy. There we go, that's pretty cool. So a basic kick and snare loop, because what I'm thinking is I'd like to have maybe a kick and snare loop and then maybe a different percussive loop uh, and then maybe like a bass line loop and then maybe something that's melodic that goes on top of it. So I brought this in. Now I started with a brand new set. By default, every time you start a new set, the tempo is gonna be 120 BPM. But I just brought in this audio clip. This is the first thing I imported and it changed the tempo of my project to the tempo of the clip. If I double click on my clip and I look down here, again, the clip is warped, it's looped, and Ableton Live has determined that the tempo of this clip is 132 BPM. Now I already know that the track volume is gonna to be too loud. Looking at the waveform, this is a very, very loud loop. And as I start to combine more elements, uh, there's a good chance everything combined will be too loud once it hits the master. So I'm just gonna turn the volume down of these tracks and let's play my little loop. Now, based on what we learned at the end of the last lesson, I know that I could take parts of this drum loop and I could move things around. I could warp it in a creative way. Uh, right now, all I wanna do is just make this a smaller loop. So I'm gonna change my loop length to one bar and I'm gonna move the loop brace because I kinda like where the snare changes at. All right, so I'm gonna go with that for now, okay? That's my little drum loop here on track one. And I think I like to rename track one so I have a better idea of what the content on this is. So I'm selecting the track name. Uh, to rename this, we can use the shortcut Command R. We can go into the Edit menu and select Rename. We can also right click on the track header and this brings up a contextual menu. Right clicking is gonna be your best friend as you navigate through Ableton Live. So uh, if you're trying to figure out how to do something, 
Sometimes it helps to just right click on the thing that you want to manipulate or control and you'll get a contextual menu with options just for that area. Rename is right here. So let's rename this drums. All right, so far so good. Now this is already warped, so it's gonna play at my uh, project's tempo and anything else that I bring in, if it's already properly edited and warped, will also play at the project tempo. So I'm gonna grab one more thing from this folder and then I'll grab some stuff from some other folders. That's kind of a cool sound. I'm gonna bring this into track two. Now, you'll notice that I'm bringing these all into the same row, all right? And each row is called a scene. That'll be significant later. For now, just kind of keep that in mind. All right, so I'm gonna play my little drum loop. Whenever I'm ready, I can play this. I see that it's warped and it's looped and it's a one bar loop. Let's go ahead and play this sound. So we place this on the second track so we can play these two sounds together. I'm gonna to rename this and I'm gonna call this uh, effects because that's what it says in the clip name. <laughs> I'm gonna to go to a different folder and I'll try to find some sort of percussive loop and ideally I wanna find something that's not the same exact tempo. So let's see, that's also 134. Let's just go to a different area. Let's see, some noise loops. That's crazy, and I like it. I'm gonna bring this loop over here. Now, it doesn't tell me the tempo when I look at the name of the clip. I have no idea if this tempo was accurate or not, but based on the fact that it's a shorter clip, Ableton has warped it, it's looped it, and it's tried to determine the tempo, and as we can see here, it's not a perfect number. It's 119.63. I'll play this with the other clips, and let's see if they play in sync. All right, we got a crazy little beat being developed here. So I'm gonna grab something from a totally different folder. I'd like to find something that's more melodic. Uh, so let me see, street grooves. Nope, nothing in there, nothing in there. Some house beats. All right, so there's probably something melodic in here. Uh, looking at the names of the clips, I see a lot of beats. Uh, what is this? Nope. Nope. Some congas. Can never really go wrong with congas. Let's go ahead and bring in a percussion loop because I don't really have any proper percussion in here. Okay, it's all getting pretty busy, but we see this percussion loop, these congas, are normally 120 BPM. So we have this clip, that's normally 120. These two are normally 132. This one is telling me is 119.63, but they're all playing in sync with our project tempo. So I would like to find something melodic. I know I have some sort of melodic sample here in my Loop Masters folder. So I'm gonna find, uh, let's go into the Electro folder and let's find some synth loops and let's see what we have here. All right, that'll work. I'm gonna drag that over here. And now I haven't created an audio track for uh, the fifth sound, but it's gonna show up here. There we go. I'm gonna rename track three. I'm gonna call this Chipmunk, <laughs> cause that's what the clip's called. This one I'm gonna call Perk, cause it's my percussion. And this one is our little melodic sound. So I'm just gonna call this Melodic. There we go. At any point, if you need to expand the width of your tracks, you can always hover your mouse over the border here. The icon changes, click and hold, and you can expand the tracks just like that. And you can also do that with multiple tracks at once. If I hold, uh, select one, hold shift, select the first one. Now they're all selected, and now I can expand or collapse these all at the same time. Helpful little trick there. All right, so I got this clip here. Let me adjust the volume. And now I'm gonna play all of these together, and they're all gonna play in sync. Now again, this is pretty busy, all playing together. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute the percussion and I'm gonna mute my little chipmunk sound. And right now what I'm focused on is getting this effects hit and this little melody to play in tune.
It actually sounds pretty good right now. But based on the fact that we're using Ableton Live, we have audio clips. So we can start playing with these clip properties to manipulate what we have going on here. So let's say maybe this effects sound, maybe I want to transpose this down an octave. The clip is selected. My transpose knob is here. If I want to go down an octave, that's going to be minus 12 semitones. So an easy way to transpose this down an octave is to select the knob, hold shift, and press down. Okay, now we're at minus 12 semitones. There we go, I think at minus 13 it sounds better. Now what I could also do, this melody's pretty cool, but maybe it'll sound better if it's playing at half of its original speed. So I can take this clip, and there's the original tempo, and below that we have divide by two and multiply by two. If I divide the tempo by two, it's actually gonna say that the original tempo was 64 BPM, and if the original tempo was 64, it's gonna have to play it a lot faster to make it play in sync at 132. And that's not what I wanna do. Instead, I'll multiply the tempo by two. It thinks the original tempo is 256, so now it's gonna have to play it at a much slower rate to play in sync with 132 BPM. Let's hear how this sounds. Now again, if we want to really manipulate the audio, I could actually stretch this even more. I hit it times two again. It doubles the tempo one more time. And I think it sounds kind of cool for the first two bars. As it keeps going, it starts to sound a little bit too wonky. So I'm gonna change the loop length to two bars. And now I think I have some room to bring my chipmunk in. Now this conga is generating a pitch. It's a percussive sound, but there's actually a pitch to it, and I want this to be in tune with everything else as well. So it's warped, meaning I can change the pitch without affecting the timing. So I'm gonna transpose this down by a couple semitones. I think just the one semitone is enough. Last thing I'll do is I think it'd be nice if this sound, instead of playing every bar, played every half note, every two beats. So I'll change the loop length from one bar to a half note. In fact, let's see how it sounds if we reverse it. So when you're initially approaching Ableton Live to just get familiar to start to get a workflow that feels good to you, this is a really fun exercise to just start bringing in different loops. Uh, ideally, if you have different loops that are already cut to a certain length, uh, when they are looped, they're gonna loop properly. This gives you a lot of flexibility because you can just throw stuff in there, start playing around with the different clip properties and just see what sort of combination you can come up with.